Good morning. It's good to see all of you, and it's good to know that many and more are going to be watching online. Um, one thing about this crisis is it's made us all more thankful when we get to be together. It'll be a joy when this is over and we can all be together and, and sing together. Um, this past week, uh, one of our dear members uh, uh, died and went to be with the Lord, Matt Pereskevich, the young father, um, young husband. Um, so we mourn uh, Matt and yet we rejoice knowing that he is with the Lord. Um, the family will have a small gathering in their home and then uh, we'll be looking uh, later in the summer possibly uh, to have a memorial. So uh, please pray for the Pereskeviches. We also heard back from Mr. Levi Bringhold, who we called to be our principal, and he'll be announcing his decision at his church uh, this morning, and that's that he's accepted the call. So uh, we'll get to know the Bringholds a lot better uh, shortly. So please pray for them as they look for a place to live and all sorts of, all sorts of things. Um, there are sign-ups to attend church. That's a new thing. Um, if, you, if you're good with computers, uh, you've probably already done this and signed up, and I hope it was a fairly easy process. Um, if that's difficult for you, or if you don't even have email, or you don't have a computer, uh, just call the church office, and uh, Debbie can sign you up, um, and we'll get that done. And that's important because uh, our worship times might change from week to week. So you also have to call to find out when church is, if you don't have a computer. So uh, please do that. Um, because of the current situation, we ask that you to practice uh, good hygiene and, and, and keep each other safe, um, that you wash your hands. Uh, well, if you're not, someone's not part of your family group, maybe just wave. Uh, just, we're going to be extra cautious so that we don't contribute to the spread of the disease. Um, also, with your bulletins, you can take those home. We're not going to reuse them. Uh, you can take those home with you or, 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 or pitch them if you'd like. Uh, and then with the hymnals, if you take a hymnal out of the hymn rack, just leave it out of the hymn rack. And at the end of the service, leave it in the pew, and that way we'll know where you were sitting, and uh, we can wipe down the hymnal that you used. So anything you grab from the, from the hymn rack, a hymn, a hymnal, a Bible, uh, just leave it in your seat when you leave. Um, we also have a baptism at our 11 o'clock service, little Lucas, so we praise God for that. And finally, the service will be abbreviated in a few places, especially at the beginning. Um, we're going to abbreviate it with uh, taking out the psalm and uh, the, the second hymn. Um, so we're going to stay seated all the way up to the gospel reading. It's good to see you all.
A reading from Exodus chapter 16. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it, each one of you, as much as he can eat. You shall each take an omer, according to the number of the persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered a little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat, but when the sun grew hot, it melted. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. So those who received Peter's word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. 
O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We continue with the hymn, hymn 743.
stand in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. We'll read it together. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread, so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us together in the midst of, of all the confusion of this world. We thank you that you have gathered us safely here, that we may hear your word, that we may be with other Christians, and that by your grace we might be fed with the bread of life, your word of Jesus himself. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would grant to us the opportunity to hear with the ears of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. You know, Jesus was a remarkable man for these people to meet. Now, I know that sounds like an understatement. It's something kind of silly to start with. But he was doing things that they had never seen and things they never truly had expected. I guess it's kind of the reverse of what we're going through, right? We, we're experiencing things we never saw or expected maybe in our lifetime to have repeated. Well, our older members do remember the polio problems and scares and, and the likes and the mumps and the measles and all those things that scared many people years ago. And so we, we kind of stay away. We're scared and we're worried. But these people, they are seeing things that they never expected to in the opposite way. He was a man who came who was healing the weak. He was doing signs one after another. He was healing the sick, cleansing the lepers. He was giving the deaf their ears, the blind their sight, the lame could walk, and on occasion, even the dead were being raised. I mean, there's no wonder people were flocking to him. They were seeing things and experiencing things that were like unlike anything else they had ever seen or done in their lives. 
No one had done things like this. There might be the occasional exorcism. There might be something happened by God's hand, but not like this. Not like this, as demons were calling out as they were meeting Jesus. Be a, go away from me. I know who you are. You are the Son of the Most High. They were hearing these things, and they found it absolutely necessary to follow Jesus even more. Our, our text is rather bland at that point, isn't it? It says, they followed him. I find it kind of interesting that you would have about 10,000 people simply calmly walking. I think it was just the opposite. I think they followed him, but with vigor and excitement. Matter of fact, they were so excited about following him that they didn't even take concerns about the basics of life. Like, where were they headed? They didn't know, but they were going to follow this Jesus. But they didn't no, where they were going to sleep. Because they didn't know how far they were traveling that day. And, and above all else, they didn't even bring food along with them. What were they going to eat? How were they going to survive? What was going to happen? But they didn't really mind. Because their sole concern was to see this Jesus. To meet up with this Jesus. To see what Jesus would do next that was so miraculous and spectacular. And what he did blew their minds. It's kind of interesting because in some ways Jesus is almost like Moses, right? He goes up in a mountain and then he, he gives bread. You know, it's pictured right over here in our window, isn't it? And the bottom is the mass of people. And there stands Jesus with a young boy, five loaves of barley bread and two fish. And what does he do? He takes it in his hands. He offers it in thanksgiving to God, breaks it, and distributes it amongst all the people there. 5,000 men, not including women and children. And at the end, 12 baskets left. Enough for one tribe apiece for the children of Israel. I mean, five loaves of bread and two fish, and all of this left over, all this done. They finally had all the food and more than they could eat. Moses in the wilderness, they prayed to God, and they received manna. Just enough for daily food, right? Give us this day our daily bread, and that's exactly what they received. Just enough and no more. If they tried to save more, God made sure it's spoiled. Because they were going to live by God and his word alone, trusting in that word. But here comes Jesus full of grace, full of all things, giving his people what they wanted and more. Here is food in abundance. Here's more than you need for the moment. And the people marveled. And it says in, in the text, they said, indeed, the people said, the pro this is the prophet who was to come into the world. I mean, they, they recognized one who is to follow in Moses' footsteps is here. And he is even greater. And they had a plan. The text says they were, yeah, they were going to come and take him by force. Well, that's kind of a bland translation, I'm going to tell you the truth. The idea was they were seizing him. They were grabbing him. And they were going to take him and control Jesus and make him king because what they wanted he had. He followed in the glory of the footsteps of Moses, and he gave them more than enough to eat, more than enough for this life. This is what they wanted, was more food, more healing, more health. They had so many desires, and they saw him fulfilled in Jesus, and they were going to take him, nab him, seize him, and control him so that they could get what they wanted. They had great faith and trust, didn't they? 
But there was a problem. It was a misplaced faith, wasn't it? It was a, a faith not in the Son of God who came not to condemn sinners but to save sinners. But it was in a God, well, kind of like the gods we see in our world today that talk about the true God and can talk about Jesus and promise only our best life now and forget that there's more to come. For you see, these people's faith was about their stomachs. There's, these people's faith was about the ease they could in, get, receive. For they cared only about comfort and pleasure and ease. They cared only about the bread of this life. In their own way, Satan had uttered his little temptation, as he did to Jesus. When he said to Jesus, if you're hungry and if you are the Son of God, turn this stone into bread so you can eat and be satisfied. And he came and whispered to these people, here's the one who can do something so you never have to worry or work again. Make him king, and you'll have all of your heart's desires. And they fell. But the miracles pointed to who Jesus was. The miracles were there so that they could sit and listen to the teaching of Jesus. So they could hear and proclaim, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but shall live for eternity. To hear him say, as he would later in this chapter, I am the bread of life. Whoever believes in me will never die. You see, that is why Jesus came. Yes, as the bread of life. But the problem these people had was not that they did not see Jesus with their own eyes. But they valued this life more than the life to come. For you see, true faith still looks at Jesus. But not simply for this life and the ease and the comfort. That's simply so that there would be no touch of a disease or anything else. But true faith knows Jesus as the true bread of life. Not a bread for this life, but a bread that brings and gives life. He is the bread of eternal life. Make no mistake, he provides today, doesn't he? I mean, we pray for it at least twice in the Lord's Prayer, don't, don't we? Give us this day our daily bread. And for most of us, we kind of hope that means monthly. But we also pray for it when we say, deliver us from evil. For Satan works all kinds of harm amongst God's people. And Jesus, and he alone is our protection as he sees fit. But the problem is, there's more to Jesus than that, isn't there? He is the bread that brings eternal life. It's the bread that we, we sang about in, in the last hymn, Jesus Priceless Treasure, which defied the death, defied the world, defied our own sin. For we belong to Jesus. He is that bread of life that comes to bring true life. Life now true, in part, but now also to know that we live eternally, living in the forgiveness and the power of the Spirit today that we might live with him forever. You see, Jesus came to forgive sins. We know that. We heard it again in a few minutes ago when I quoted John 3, 16. He came to destroy the rule of Satan. And I referred to that as well already, haven't I? As the demons would call out to him, Do, go away, it's not your time yet, and Jesus would cast them out and so break the rule of Satan amongst the people. But Jesus came not just in sickness and in death, but he came for the things that really matter, sin and eternal death. See, there is why Jesus stands. There is why Jesus comes. And that is why Jesus had to withdraw himself from this crowd to be by himself. His time had not yet come in the first place, but he didn't come for the time and the expectations of this crowd. He came for so much more. I, I robed in the back. 
And I looked in the mirror hanging on the door there, and all I could think of was Paul's words, we've seen a mirror now dimly. I don't know if you've ever been in the back and looked at that mirror, but that is a dim mirror. It's cloudy, it's everything else, and I kind of liked it. I didn't look as bad as normal. But the problem we have is now we see in a mirror dimly, Paul says. We know in part as we are known. You see, the problem is, on this side of heaven, we know in our hearts, we know through faith in our hearts, that God is gracious and good, protecting, destroying the rule of Satan. And yet we struggle, don't we, with the same temptation that these men and women and children had. We struggle with the temptation that we look for only good today. Health, ill, apart from the illnesses of this world. We look for only peace in our homes and amongst our families. And we forget how easy it is to lose sight of what we see now dimly. See, that's why we need to gather. That's why we need to hear uh, as we listen on our, on our computers uh, to those word again. Because we need to be reminded where things lie. You see, this is the question. Is there true faith or misplaced faith? You see, it's easy to have that false or that misplaced faith. We can talk about Jesus and still miss the point. We can talk about how much we love Christ and then try to fit him into all the rest of the things we want to do with our lives. Devotions get pushed aside, work and soccer and baseball, all those things which we love, while they so often come before the hearing the word of God. Worship can become half-hearted, even as we talk about how much we love Jesus. And that's why we need to remind ourselves why Jesus came. It's why we need to live in true faith. For in our faith, true faith, we begin to see our false gods, and we turn to the only help we have in the face of their temptations, to turn to Jesus true faith that reminds us we live for eternity, that our life today is is a part of the web that leads into heaven, and not just for the fullness of life now, but for the fullness of life that is to come. True faith now bows humbly before our God, and we receive what he has come to give us, give us the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation, now in part and then in full. What a great and gracious God we have. For here in Jesus is life. Here in Jesus is the only thing that we can find that brings comfort and an anchor in a world that can go bonkers. For what we have is a God who has come, a God who has been made flesh, a God who has suffered in every way we have, a God who has been tempted in every way we have, and yet without sin. Here is our anchor, here is our life, here is our salvation. It's in the true bread of life. It's in Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes your understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. And we rise now to sing on my heart.
At this time, we ask you to bring your offerings forward. You may be seated. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children, and you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father, we thank you for our congregation and for all the blessings of the Word. Grant to all of us repentance and true faith that trusting in you, we might be protected from all false gods. We thank you for the baptism today of Lucas, and we ask that you would bless all the members of St. John, including the Corey family, Tom and Audrey Kraft, James and Carol Crawford, James and Susan Cray, and Jerry Crothers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you that Mr. Bringold has accepted the call. We ask that you bless him in this time of transition and that you would richly bless his ministry in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our nation, for our state, our cities and communities, including the city of Detroit. We ask that you'd bless our president and all the governors and that you'd give them great wisdom. We also ask that you'd be with nurses and doctors and all those who care for our bodies, that you would keep them safe and bless them in every good work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, watch over the vulnerable, 
and all those who cannot leave their homes. Keep them safe from the virus and give us a joyful reunion when we can see them again face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask that you would heal the sick, including Leslie, Chris, and all those we now name in our hearts. Watch over our bodies, Lord, and give us strength to endure our trials with faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, bless those who mourn, especially the family of Matt Periskevich. Comfort them with the message that because your son lives, we also will live. And neither life nor death can separate us from that love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen.